In this episode, we will have a look at Format Level 1 from Exploit Exercises Protostore. This class of vulnerability is weird, but it was mind blowing to me when I first saw it. So, first of all, what are format strings? Probably the most known function in C is printf. Printf prints formatted data to std out. In my programming in C video, I've used printf to print a name that a user can supply. The parameters of printf are the following. The first parameter is the so-called format string. In that early video, that was knock knock and the percentage s. And as the second parameter, we used argv1, which contains a string. So printf read the format string and found the percentage s, which means that at this position belongs a string. So it takes the first supplied variable, in this case argv1, and places a string there. Format string supports a lot of different types of variables. For example, percentage %d, which is assigned decimal integer, or percentage %x to display a number in hex. And it can do even more than that. For example, if you specify a number between the percentage and the specifier, you can tell what size it should be padded to. And you can, for example, prepend a zero to that number to bet the results of zero. Format string functions like that exist also in other languages. For example, you can use pretty much the same features in Python. Print a format string with percentage and then the variables afterwards with another percentage sign. Or better use the format function, which has a slightly different syntax, but in the end it's all the same. And now you wonder, how the hell can something that just prints text be exploited? So let's have a look at the source code of format level 1. Main calls the function voln with the string from argv1. And that string is placed in printf. And then we have a global variable target, which is checked if it got modified. So pretty similar to some earlier stack buffer overflow challenges, we need to manipulate this value. But how can we manipulate this variable in memory with printf? Well, let's do this step by step. Let's first execute the program. As you can see, it will simply print whatever we supply in argv1. That looks simple. But there is one small thing you should notice. Which parameter of printf does the attacker control? It's not the second parameter like in the programming in C video. It's the first parameter, the format string. Can we just use some percentage syntax? Let's try. Let's enter a format string. Test percentage %d. Oh damn, it printed a number. Weird. Let's add some more. Whoa, more numbers. Let's print them as hex instead of signed decimal numbers. That looks familiar. Remember the videos where we were looking at the stack? Do those values starting with bfffff remind you of something? Those were stack addresses. So what are we printing here? If you have watched the previous episode about reversing C, you know how functions are being called. Especially in 32-bit, the parameters are simply placed on the stack and then the function is called. So if you would use printf normally, your variables that you want to print would be placed on the stack. Well, now there, there are no variables being placed on the stack. So what values are, re are we reading? Obviously, we are reading whatever printf can find on the stack. So any value on the stack. So what can you do with that? First of all, it's a memory leak vulnerability. You can leak all kinds of stuff from the stack. Imagine you had a program with ASLR, meaning that the location of the stack in memory is random, and you don't know where it is, but you need the address for a buffer overflow to jump to shellcode. With this here, you can leak values from the process memory, more specifically from the stack, and thus possibly leaking stack addresses, which then you can use in a second step for a buffer overflow. In a recent CTF which I played, there was an exploitable challenge where I used the format string vulnerability to leak the stack canary. I will do a video about exploit mitigations at another point, but the stack canary is a random value which protects from buffer overflows. If I can get this number, I can defeat the protection, which I did. So at first, leaking some weird values from a process memory doesn't, cycle like, doesn't sound like much, but there are many examples you can come up with where disclosing some memory could help exploiting a target. After all, bugs like Heartbleed were just leaking some memory and it was awful. Ok, but in our particular case, how can we use that to modify a value? At the moment, it only looks like we can leak values from the stack. 
Let's have a look at the printf man page, man3 printf, and let's scroll to the well known bugs section. It says here, if something comes from untrusted user input, it may contain percentage %n, causing the printf call to write to memory and creating a security hole. And a little bit further up, the specifier n is explained as the number of characters written so far is stored in the integer indicated by the int pointer or uh, variant pointer argument. So percentage %n writes the amount of characters that were already printed into a variable. And a variable is just some area in memory. And we know that to specify where the area is, we need to use a pointer. Or if we just look at the sample code, a pointer is simply an address. So that printf knows where to write the result. So if you were to write the legit Z program with percentage %n, you would place a pointer to an integer variable as a parameter to printf. But in assembler, this is just simply putting an address of the variable on the stack. This means that whatever value is on the stack is used as a location where printf will write to. Now you can basically solve this challenge alone. We need to write a value in target. So let's use object dump minus t to find all symbols from this binary. And here's the address of the target variable. Now, when we want to printf to write something at this location, we have to find this address on the stack. Let's start investigating. I will use Python and a one-line script or inline script directly from the command line via minus c to help me with printing a test string. For example, 10 hex numbers. Hmm, maybe I want to separate them. Doesn't look like the addresses is here. Maybe if we print more values from the stack. Nope, not here. Maybe more? Wait a minute. What is that weird pattern? From the values of the, those hex values, it could be ASCII. Hex 20 is a space after all. With Python, we can quickly convert those hex values to ASCII characters. And whoa, percentage x? That looks like our string that we have supplied. Let's test this with um, adding some capital A's because we can recognize those ASCII values easily. Now we just have to look for 4141414141. And indeed, there are our A's. And that makes sense because the program arguments are simply stored on a stack, like the environment variables and other stuff. Cool. This means we can simply place the address from the target on the stack ourselves by adding it to our string. So get the address again for target and then we can add the address in our string. Maybe wrap it in some A's and B's so we can find it in the output easily. Oh yes, there it is. Cool. So in theory, we just have to place the percentage %x that was printing this address with percentage %n to instead write to this location. To do this, we first have to change our format string and making the number of x's we print lower so then we can use a percentage %n to write to that number. And now I'm start fiddling around with it trying to get the right number and if you pay attention to f looking for the a's and b's again that are wrapping the address, you see that it's not perfectly aligned anymore. So it's some trial and error figuring out how many x's we need so that the next x that I append will hit the address exactly so I can replace that with an n. You could do it more intelligently, but I will just figure it out with trial and error. You have to be careful because uh, remember from our previous videos where the stack was shifting around because of stuff like environment variables, the different length program argument that we supply moves around the stack as well, so you might have to fiddle around quite a bit until you just get it right. Okay, that took a bit, but looks cool. The last x seems to reference our address now. And when we place the x with the n to write to that address, we modified the target. And you can imagine that if we can write anywhere in memory, we could overwrite things to redirect code execution as well. So that will be the case in later levels. Just a small tip uh, when you work with format string exploits, it makes sense to keep your text string always the same length then you don't have to fiddle around much. Um, just use Python script that always extends or cuts the string to at like 500 characters or something. And then you have enough space to play around and the stack doesn't move around much. <laughs>